I was in high school. I was eighth grade, even seven through six. Well, those are the, the eras or times where I felt like I was so alone and I didn't have the courage to speak with other people. They see me as someone who's shy, someone who just goes to the corner and don't speak to anyone. And I look someone who's not approachable and very intimidating. And someone who is like not part of the class even the teacher also says that but later on the teacher even in grade 11 11 grade or 12 the teacher realized something that changed in me and it was that outstanding confidence to network with people to talk with people or communication skills and then i transitioned to build my business and then i just found out myself being very skillful when it comes to negotiating, the teaching my ideas, and resolving conflicts. So that was a big shift. And I'm going to say to you, how can you actually do that as young as you are, whether you're 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 years old, so that you can start that amount of confidence, you get to meet people, you get to close a sale, make a sale, negotiate, how do you sell? What are you offering? Whether it's, maybe it's your presentation in school or you're offering services or products to a client. Maybe near the future you want to be like that. Point number one is actually the importance of strong communication skills. So I didn't know what communication really is. I just know that when I was like in high school, communication is something about verbal, nonverbal, there are barriers to communication. Those are just the basics. Definition of com communication and how can you actually, and how can you communicate effectively with other people. But the school system doesn't actually say, how do you connect with people? How do you approach with people? How do you negotiate with people? So end of, of the day, uh, when people graduate or just enter the school, they face a lot of social anxiety and then when I, whenever I woke up um, in, whenever I walk into a classroom I, I just saw people like using the phone and not turning with other people just like they're using it maybe they care sometimes and they want to talk but they don't have the courage even in college and university so that's the biggest problem with students today they don't know how to communicate effectively in the manner of socializing or networking so strong communication skills is really crucial in terms if you want to start your business you will talk with clients you will talk with your employees you will talk about in terms you will market the service that you offer you will market the products you will create or even write content maybe on canva and then post it on your social media pages but if you don't know how to communicate you you can't sell anything if you don't know how to communicate you can't convince someone if you don't know how to communicate you can't network with someone because your ability to network with people is insufficient because you lack strong communication skills so it really boils down to mastering when it comes to communication, I recommend you that to observe TED speakers on YouTube and get their introduction and how they present. You learn from other people, uh, basically. And then the other part uh, that I can also recommend is to start your own content creation. For, for example, for me, maybe 20% uh, 20, 20 of what I do to improve my communication skill that will really improve me is vlogging like this one. So when I started speaking English, I became more and more fluent and I began like expressing my ideas from word by word scripts to bullet point scripts to no scripts at all so that's a huge advantage when it comes to vlogging and actually the greatest thing to get communicate with other people is to practice with application with action and repetition so what really matters is action and repetition with these two if you challenge yourself to speak to one guy or maybe set a small goal where you speak one extra sentence in a stranger or anything at all just make it basic just make it possible there's a quotation that i've developed that if you can't talk to a guy then you can't talk to a girl so that's one of the things that, I, that are very evident when it comes to my communication school so i was like here in the garden and there were like a gardener uh fixing these plants right and then then they're like preparing it so that they can go here go there and then go up to another building and there's an event they will like arrange it and it was like early in the morning and i've set my, myself as a goal to like talk to random guys before starting to agree because when it comes to like uh, communicating with a girl, I have no problem with it. But when it, with someone that I like, right, it really intimidates me. And I found the, the reason I was watching also Hamza's content, you know, that YouTuber thing, YouTuber guy, great guy. And I realized that I'm putting myself at a very high state, right? It's like working out, he said, working out. Then like if you work out, then you said you can't, then 
you can work out. But when it comes to school, uh, you don't have that excitement anymore, that courage to speak to a girl. Then basically, the problem is not the goal. I mean, the problem is not you. The problem is the goal. It's 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 really challenging. So you need to like break it down more, or even break it worn down to make it the basic things. Instead of talking talking to one girl, maybe you talk to 10 random strangers or it could be on the bus all right if you're intimidated with your classmate it could be someone or a staff from the school or university so that's what i do and when it comes to point number two techniques uh, for networking you actually want to share strategies when it comes to initiating conversation with other people the way to get better at it is to fail at the very first start the way to get better at communicating is to communicate with people the way to overcome your fears is to face your fears the way to overcome the fear of rejection is to be rejected so it's, it's just like our comfort zone so initiating a conversation with someone even for me i'm gonna be honest it's it's hard i'm still struggling but i'm still fighting so as, as a man you don't have to be perfect you reach that end result and you're not afraid anymore of initiating with people that's not really the goal the goal is if you fall down you re-strategize your system and then you go up and then you take action again fail take action take fail take action but the graph doesn't look like this you fail take action it's not stagnant it's like a stair you fail take action fail take action and then little by little like 0.01 percent you're improving so that's the thing that i also do and when it comes to active listening it's very important for someone to let them speak all right you just shut, shut up if it's too long then you you might want to interrupt that but never interrupt someone when they're speaking right wait for like three seconds that would be nice but there's going to share anything and then you speak right even if it's too long you want to you like say something shut up and just listen to them right when it comes to building connection i realize that if you're expecting something from them then you can't approach them and you'll be intimidated and you'll be even disappointed by those expectations so i really want to express to you that when you're communicating or wanting to network with someone don't expect anything and just talk to him or her with genuine connection. A genuine curiosity and interest with that person. Why you want to talk to him in the very first place. If you're going to communicate with someone, have purpose and intention. Networking also is very important. When I say network, it's not about like, oh, you should only network a friend of a friend or only in your classroom or someone who is, has the same interest. It could be someone who you don't completely know it online as long as it has purpose for example your purpose online is to build a network then that would be great okay if you're just networking without reason or purpose or not prospecting or targeting intentionally on who you're going to network online like facebook group groups or something then it's not good so you have to network with purpose and how do you actually mastering the art of pitching idea all right if we have an idea as an entrepreneur or as a young student we have to know how to communicate with it because if we only have an idea and don't know how to communicate it with other people then that idea just becomes a dream and not a reality so i'm going to introduce you the effective communication techniques for crafting and delivering uh, compelling pitches when it comes to investors clients or uh, stakeholders if you, if you have but i think in this, in the context of a student it's more related to pitching your ideas to professors or to teachers or to students or to any random guy at the university or college or high school. If as young as you are, you know how to pitch your ideas, then you're far more likely you're going to be successful. So one of the greatest tip number one for pitching ideas is to practice, right? Practice the greatest application of learning. And then after you actually practice, right? There's a lot of internet sources, actually. I don't have to teach you in that detail. I want you to be an entrepreneur who is resourceful and take action. So you practice, and then number two, you learn, and then you repeat practice, learn, practice, learn, by recession. Two, that's the secret when it comes to pitching ideas. And then you, I recommend uh, reading uh, Alex Ramosi. I think it's the best sales video uh, ever. You'll know how to handle objection and how to negotiate. Maybe I'll link down in the description. I hope I remember. If not, then you just search Alex Ramosi, the best sales training technique. And then you also want to uh, consume content when it comes to like how to be a salesman, the basic course by another person that's like, I think it's nine to like nine or eight, eight, eight to nine years ago. Uh, today is 2024. So I pro practically it's going to be older, but it doesn't mean it's old. It's not updated anymore and not relevant. It's actually evergreen. When it comes to evergreen, when I say evergreen, it's, it never expires. It's still relevant no matter how the time goes by. If business changes, being a salesman, having that techniques doesn't change. Like communication. You still need communication in all of your areas, right? Even the internet, social media, you still need communication virtually. So I'm saying to you, that's important 
for you as young as you are to get and develop your communication skills. And after that, when you know how to pitch your ideas, you will know in just a classroom, you'll upgrade it to your business. If you want to talk with other people, if you want to talk with clients, you must know how to actually know the process and the system when it comes to negotiating. So negotiating is not like your inner identity or something. You must also write it down, learn, be strategic, create plans, and then you research, just, just like basic research, and then you practice a little bit, and then you speak now, right? You speak with real clients, or you speak with potential clients, right? You search online, and then maybe you book an appointment. That's what I do, actually. I'm, I run an agency. So I find clients, and then uh, before I close them, I need to, like, answer their objections. You only understand what I'm saying if you learn that in Alex Ramosi and also the course. Point number four is strategic, successful negotiation. How do you negotiate with other people? It's just basics. You need systems when it comes to the pro process, step-by-step -step on how it you ask questions like negotiation is more like asking questions for example this one is the introduction get to know the person and then ask the problem and the desire of the person and then ask a follow-up question where you ask them are you ready to take the next step are you someone who is prepared do you think that you're that that type of person who is willing to go through all of this there's a lot of questions, you know. I actually teach this also to my students. But my uh, my recommendation for you, if you want successful negotiation, it's just systems. You just gotta build it and just learn it from other people. Again, it's yeah. There's a lot of resources in the internet. All you have to do is to have the initiative and learn. But if you if you don't have this desire for it, if you're not passionate or you think that it's not a priority or you don't want to change your life, then practically what I'm saying here is just use this, right? So you need to work on that. So point number five is approaching a conflict. The resolution. So when you actually have conflict, for example, with your groupmate or team, what you want to do is to first mention your mistake and then you mention and point out the mistake because no one wants to listen. Why? Right? That's cool. number one. Number two is maybe you compliment them something that you genuinely like about them or their work, etc. and so forth, or their character, or their, their personality. And then you point out their mistakes, maybe indirectly, it's much more better. I recommend reading How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's, this actually talks to you, how do you handle those things in life, right? So point number six is nonverbal communication and body language. So as much as like important, when you're speaking, or you know, when I'm speaking in like this, uh, a verbal language where a shoulder is like too crouch, would you, would you think that I'm confident, I'm believable or something that I'm to be trustworthy, I, I think certainly not because how you uh, approach your nonverbal languages affect also how people perceive you. If I'm like, my back is like that one and then my my face is going down, I think that's not really confident, you know? If you see that person who is like standing straight, then tall, then practically this person, we would have an initial impression without even talking and communicating with that person. You will be impressed. The people around you will be impressed because of your nonverbal gestures. Sometimes you have to fake it till you make it, right? When you fake it till you make it, and then you believe in your mind that I'm confident, and you know, the affirmation and visualization, then they really work. Then they become part of your identity, and then that eventually helps you in the long run. And when it comes to point number seven, practicing effective communication and leadership is more about how do you handle people with the way you speak and the way you delegate their tasks and the way you communicate, the way you pitch the, the new idea of, oh, this work is very impactful, the way you motivate people through communication, that's really important. When it comes to leadership, it's not only in business, it's also in school, it's only in the family, it's also in any organization that you lead with people. Because leadership of communication is very important for you to be an effective communicator. If you know how to lead people and then effectively communicate the task and motivate themselves, then you can create a, and build an organization that is successful for someone where you can help yourself like communicate better with other people so that other people could consider your ideas and collect, would love to collaborate with you, would love to connect with each other and so forth. So that is leadership. And when it comes to number eight, continuous learning and improvement, it's important for us to always search from the internet, right? All we have is the internet, my guy. We have all the information in the world, right? We have, we can search for anything. You don't need mentors too much. But the question is, you all, you all have these resources, but no one's guiding. So there's a difference between learning and someone who's guiding you, where someone who can guide you when with those information, are they correct or not? And what are the steps that you need to do? Even we have chat GTP or what the next, next step things to do. You don't have someone to explain it for you. You don't have someone who has experience on this. 
you're going to do this step by step, but you don't know the experience. You, you don't have the sufficient knowledge to understand these things. Even if you apply those knowledge or information that you have in ChatGDP and Google, you'll be still sacrificing your time and then your experience and then your energy and then your effort. You'll spend a lot, really. You'll spend a lot of time. If, if you're going to hire a mentor or a coach like me, I can sincerely help you for that. But I'm not here to just like bombard you with my services or, uh, here, hey, go to my coach program and you will be successful. No, I'm just saying the truth based on my observation that even if we have Google, why people still hire coaches, right? Why they still have mentors. Even the greatest um, greatest authors, before they even started a business, they have mentors, right? Before they even like create a book in, in the very first place, they have mentors. Either like billionaires, even like Warren Buffett or Jeff Bezos, Jeff and so forth. They have mentors. That mentors to be your friend, that mentors to be paid, that mentors to be a network that you found. But if you're going to waste a lot of time when it comes to networking with people and finding the right person i think it's will take a lot of investment when it comes to finding the right person so that's the beauty of networking it's kind of hard and challenging but it really gives you an edge and how can you make it possible so when it comes to negotiation when it comes to pitching your ideas all it takes is practice continuous learning and someone to guide you right it could be your parents even make it affordable affordable or free for example i mean that's it do you have any like uh questions that you have in mind then you can just like comment down below or if you have some valuable tips that you have that i've never even mentioned i'd love to hear it and i'll promise you that i'll comment down below right so goodbye